and I'd never ever diet. And in fact, I love to eat and I eat all the forbidden foods, butter, bacon, eggs, whipped cream, the whole shebang. In fact, some of you would be quite shocked at how indulgent I am with food. A few months ago, my husband saw my breakfast plate and said, that looks like a truckie's breakfast. And that's because it looks something like this. And that's pretty typical of what I would eat in a day, or in the morning. Now, I love what I do because it's making a profound difference in people's lives. I receive daily success stories, and not just about weight loss, but all kinds of health improvements. And in the 10 years that I've been studying health and nutrition, I've discovered that the majority of health messages are incorrect. And that's why I now feel obligated to share what I know. So how did we get this so wrong? I'm going to show you this fun little clip from the brilliant documentary Fathead, which explains it beautifully. In history into one year, we've only been farming and eating grain since about yesterday, which is when we became shorter and fatter. We only started consuming processed vegetable oils about 10 minutes ago, which is when heart disease became our number one killer. So after examining all this human history, the experts came to the obvious conclusion. We need to eat a lot more of these. And so they convinced us that human health depends on foods we didn't eat for more than 99% of our entire existence. How did this happen? In the 1950s, a biochemist named Ansel Keys published a study that compared heart disease and fat consumption in a half dozen countries. The more fat, the more heart disease. The trend line was unmistakable. Just one little problem. Keys left out countries where people eat a lot of fat but have very little heart disease, like Holland and Norway. He also left out countries where people don't eat much fat but do have a lot of heart disease, like Chile. In fact, Keys had reliable data from 22 countries and the results were all over the place. But you can't make a big splash in the scientific community with a trend line that looks like this. So Keys did what any dedicated researcher would do. He threw out the data that didn't fit and published his results. His punishment for this bit of scientific chicanery was to get his picture on the cover of Time magazine. Keys became known as the father of the lipid hypothesis, which says that eating saturated fat raises the cholesterol in your blood, and high cholesterol in your blood clogs your arteries and causes heart disease. Now, did anyone notice that it was called a hypothesis? It's still called that today. It was simply an idea that was never proven, and in fact, many studies have now shown absolutely no correlation between saturated fat intake and heart disease. Now, what few people know so we've been eating saturated fat for millions of years, two and a half million to be precise, with no obesity and no heart disease. Those things came much later on, really only the last hundred years. Now some skeptics love to say, oh, but when we were hunter-gatherers, we lived a very short time. But that's not actually the case. The science shows us that if we survive natural elements like saber-toothed tigers, we lived a very long time. And in fact, our longevity shortened once we started eating grain and other modern food. And the more the food changes, the more we change. And it's not just our health that's declining. Our face shape and physical attributes are changing as well. If you can pass... So have a look at these African children and notice their nice wide faces and beautiful straight teeth. So when we changed our diet, our jaws started to narrow and other malformations are extremely common. So you start to see eyes too close together, lopsided ears, protruding jaws, protruding foreheads. Now I know it seems shocking but this is simply a case of malnutrition. 